Shalom. Barak to Yahweh, Barashim, Yahweh Shai, Barashim, Makakadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in. Much respect to the apostles and others, the great millstone, and to all the brothers out there doing the work. I say, Shalom. All right, this lesson is going to be titled uh, Diligent and Various Topics. All right, so uh, let's get right into it. As you can see here, this is uh, Google, the definition of diligent. And uh, this is a land back off uh, yesterday's uh, the elders, the uh, apostles and elders of Great Millstone, right, out there, uh, okay, uh, bringing the word, all right, and uh, Elder Apostle Tahar, you know, was talking about this word, diligence, okay, and about being diligent. So, what does it mean to be diligent? And Elder Apostle Tahar has been in this truth for 36 years, all right? Elder Gabar, 30 years, all right? Aramblab, 27 years, I believe, all right? So on and so forth. So what does it mean to be diligent? Having or showing care, conscientiousness in one's work or duties, all right, being a servant of the Lord, all right? You understand that, people? Industrious, hardworking, click on the arrow, conscientious, all right, meticulous, okay, painstaking, all right, rigorous, careful, thorough, attentive, See, earnest, studious, okay, means what? To study, right? What comes to mind? Well, we'll go to it. What is that? 2 Timothy 2.15. We'll jump over there, as well as 1 Peter, uh, or rather, uh, 2 Peter 1 and 10. All right, so lock it for that. And we'll jump over to 2 Peter 1 and 10 afterwards. All right, studious, constant. Uh, preserving, persistent, tenacious. You see that? Because the elder was going into, again, you know, you can't be hot or cold. I mean, uh, you can't be lukewarm or cold. You have to be hot for this. All right? Because if not, the Lord's going to spew you out of his mouth. And we read that in uh, Revelations uh, 3 and 16. All right? Uh, where are we here? All right. Dedicated, committed, driven, active, busy. You see that? There's no days off, people, in doing this work. All right? It's about making the videos, and then uh, it's about going out there, street teaching. All right? But first, you got to do what? You got to eat the roll, as you read in Ezekiel chapter 3. Eat this roll and go out and teach unto the house of Israel, and of course, unto the nations, okay? Because, you know, you were sanctified, all right? The men that are in this truth, you were sanctified, okay? And uh, you were ordained to do this work, which means it was decreed, and this was decreed in the heavens when you were spirits, all right, and that was done before the foundation of the world, okay, before the world began, all right? And that's out of the scriptures, people, all right? Uh, tireless, okay, all right? Laborous, see that? You understand? It's all about the work. All right, let's see here. Uh, so I'll take you to 2 Timothy 2.15, all right? And these are basic scriptures, people, all right? 
study to show thyself approved unto the most high a workman being diligent okay that need if not be ashamed rightfully dividing the word of truth how many of y'all out there know how to do that and what that means that is done through your precepts okay what is that oh uh, Psalms uh, 119. Give me a minute. All right, this is Psalms 119, 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every fault way. See that? All right. Okay, you understand that? is rightfully dividing the word of truth. Precept upon precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Okay? You understand? A workman being diligent, you have to get into, all right, the, uh, the etymology of words, right, which you see the elders and us doing, all right, in the Hebrew in the Greek, in the Latin, okay? Uh, you have to understand what allegories are, symbolism. You understand? Like you have to understand, for example, the serpent in the garden, that's an allegory, that's symbolism, right? That's actually talking about a man, one of the sons of the wicked, okay? But in order to know that, you have to know what? The history. You have to also get into the etymology of words to know that, okay? You have to be able to break it down. You know, when you get into uh, words of the serpent and subtitle, all right, that you read in Genesis, the third chapter, and when it breaks it down and you get into those words, you understand it's not talking about a talking snake, but a man, and who would that be? One of the sons of the wicked because the earth was broken down into three parts. The sons of God, sons of the wicked, and the sons of men. Making the 18 nations. Do you understand? All right? So you got to get into all of that, people. All right? You have to get into the etymology of words. Okay? You have to be able to break down the prophecies. All right, the dark sayings, the parables, all right? In order to do that, you have to be what? Diligent, okay? You have to be diligent. What's another one here, all right? Uh, what is that? 2 Peter 1.10, all right? Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence, you see? So, again, have to be what? You have to be a workman. Okay? You got to be committed. You got to do the work. All right? So be, brethren, give diligence to make your calling. Calling means invite. And again, you're invited in. You're called in. Okay? Because you don't choose the Lord. He chooses you. St. John 15, 16. All right? Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You understand, people? All right? And election. Who's the Lord coming back for? The elect. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds, north, south, east, west, from one end of heaven onto the other. It's all about the elect. It's not coming back for all of Israel. All right? This isn't like the exodus out of Egypt where the Lord took everybody out. No. He's only coming back for the elect this time. Okay? Just the elect. And that starts with 144,000 or men, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, plus a great multitude. Right? And as a matter of fact, let's go to that. All right? Let me finish reading this, all right? So, to make your calling and election sure, if you do these things, you shall never fall. You see that? 
Do you understand? Again, the Lord's word does not go out in vain. Okay? And your work is not in vain. All right? An example of that before I take you to something else. What is that? First Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter. All right. Around the uh, 50, 58th verse, I believe. All right. Last verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, always growing in the work in being a servant of the Lord. You don't stay in one place. If so, then I guess the Spirit of the Lord ain't supping with you. You have to grow in this thing. And by the way, you grow quickly. Okay? You grow and you grow quickly in this. All right? So that's what it means to always be abounding. You're always growing. Always learning. Even the elders will tell you they are still learning. Even having been in this thing 36 years, 30 years, 27 years, all right? So there's no such thing that a guy comes in and he's in this thing six months, two years, five years, 10 years, and he knows more than the others. When they themselves are telling you they are still growing, all right? So always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as he know that your labor, you see, your work, is not in vain in the Lord. All right? And you know what? I'll take you to something. We'll do that when we come back. We're going to end this here and we'll come right back with part two. Show up.